morning, everybody. Welcome to our service of morning prayer for the third Sunday of Easter. It's uh, not the weather we've been used to for the last few days, is it? Um, much as the ground needs the rain, please, please open up the sun back because it's bank holiday tomorrow. <laughs> well, let's begin with our first hymn. What a friend we have in Jesus. <laughs> the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We have come together as the family of God in our Father's presence to offer him praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive his word, to bring before him the needs of the world and to seek his grace, that through his son Jesus Christ we may give ourselves to his service. Jesus said, the first commandment is, listen Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, 
love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. So as we sit in a few moments' silence, we reflect on those two great commandments and we call to mind the times in our lives when we have not loved God with our whole being or when we've not loved our neighbour as ourselves. We bring our shortcomings before God this morning. Let us confess our sins to the Father and seek his pardon and his peace. Almighty and merciful God, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with all our heart, and we have not loved others as Christ loves us. We are truly sorry. In your mercy forgive us. Help us to amend our lives, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Byddai di ddiw ein tad, ac ymododd y byd ag ef ein hun, trwy ein harglwyddiaeth i Grist. Ac sy'n maddau pechodau pawb sy'n wyrad i ddeio, baddau i ni. A'n gwared oddi wrth ein holl bechodau, a roddi i ni ras a nerth yr ysbryd glan. Amen. with the assurance that our sins have been forgiven because Jesus died and rose again for us, we praise him with our words. O Lord, open our lips, and, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. We sing to you, O Lord, and bless your name, and tell of your salvation from day to day. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, Father, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, beginning is now and shall be forever. Amen. Worship the Lord. All praise to his name. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 30. If you want to follow it in the Bibles, it's on page 558, or it is on the screen behind. We'll say alternate verses of Psalm 30. I will exalt you, Lord, for you lifted me out of the depths and did not let my enemies gloat over me. Lord, my God, I call to you for help, and you hear me. You, Lord, brought me up from the realm of the dead. You spared me from going down to the pit. Sing the praises of the Lord, you, his faithful people. Praise his holy name. For his anger lasts only a moment but his favour lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. When I felt secure, I said, I shall never be shaken. Lord, when you favoured me, you made my royal mountain stand firm, but when you hid your face, I was dismayed. To you, Lord, I called. In the Lord, I cried to you. What is gained if I am silenced, if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it proclaim your faithfulness? Hear, Lord, and be merciful to me. Lord, be my help. You turned my wailing into dancing. You removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. That my heart may sing your praises and not be silent. Lord, my God, I will praise you to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen.
So we have our reading from James's letter. Yeah, the reading this morning is from James, that's chapter 5, verses 7 to 20, and that can be found on page 1216 of the Church Bible. So that's James, chapter 5, verses 7 to 20, on page 1216. Patience in suffering. Be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rains. You too, be patient and stand firm, because the Lord's coming is near. Don't grumble against one another, brothers and sisters, or you will be judged. The judge is standing at the door. Brothers and sisters, as an example of patience in the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. As you know, we count as blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of Job's pers Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Above all, my brothers and sisters, do not swear, not by heaven or by earth or by anything else. All you need to say is a simple yes or no. Otherwise, you will be condemned. The prayer of faith. Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you ill? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being even as we are. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again he prayed and the heavens gave rain and the earth produced its crops. My brothers and sisters, if one of you should wander from the truth and someone should bring that person back, remember this, whoever turns a sinner from the error of their way will save them from death and cover over a multitude of sins. This is the word of the Lord. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your servant James. Thank you that his letter to the church, the early church, is preserved for us. That as it taught those first disciples, so it also teaches us. And so we pray that as you've opened your word to our hearts this morning, we may also open our hearts to your word, not just today, but every day. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, children don't seem to have the same hang-ups about praying that we do as adults, do they? People have recorded children's prayers over the years, the poignant ones and the unintentionally funny ones. So here are just a few of them. Dear God, it must be super hard to love all the people in the world, especially my brother. I don't know how you do it. Dear God, I wish you would not make it so easy for people to come apart. I had to have three stitches. Dear God, I didn't think orange went with purple until I saw that sunset you made on Tuesday night. That was really cool. 
hands. Dear God, if you watch in church on Sunday, I'll show you my new shoes. Well, how James wants us to view prayer is central to this final passage of his letter. We like to think, don't we, that we're capable of doing things on our own, that our successes are due to our own efforts. Yes, we might think of praying when we have an exam or a job interview, or when we're struggling with something. Most of the time, though, we think we can manage, that we don't need to pray. But as we've seen throughout our study of James's letter, he's concerned to teach us about faith that works. In this passage, James will show us that prayer is central to this. Because prayer is articulating our faith. It's verbalising our dependence on God. Indeed, it's a way of glorifying God, because when we pray, we're saying to God, only you can do it. James wants us to remember that dependence on God is always a priority for the Christian disciple. As we look through the verses of our passage this morning, we see three themes. The patience of hope, the prayer of faith, and the fellowship of love. Firstly, let's look at what James has to say about the patience of hope. Our passage today begins immediately after the warning to rich oppressors that James issued, which we studied last time. So it's in light of this oppression that James urges the Christian community to be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. There are times when we're not very good at waiting. Traffic jams and supermarket queues, just as a couple of examples. It's difficult to be patient, and especially so when we're under pressure. But let's remember James's words in chapter 1, verse 12. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial, because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. James is calling for a right perspective, for us to be looking ahead during times of difficulty and suffering to what is coming. And this looking ahead comes in three parts. Firstly, we're to wait for the Lord's return, as James describes in verses 7 to 9. The reason we can wait patiently when we're under pressure is because we know that justice is coming. We've seen throughout James's letter, he's writing about the destinies of rich and poor, about the ultimate reward for persevering, and the judgment on those who do not show mercy. Patient hope is founded not on wishful thinking, but on the certainty that God will act, that he will come, and he will set things right. When we wonder what God is doing while we're under pressure, James reminds us that the Lord is coming. And just as a farmer can't always see the progress of the crops before the harvest, but knows there will be a harvest, and so waits patiently, so we too should wait. In the meantime, secondly, we should be living by the Lord's standards. Whenever the New Testament describes the future, the coming of the Lord, it always feeds back to the present. If justice is coming in the future, say the writers of the New Testament, this is how you are to live now. So James has some simple instructions on how to live while we're waiting. In verse 9 he says, don't grumble against each other. Where it's easy to grumble and complain instead of being patient. And who doesn't like a good moan when things are going wrong? We even grumble against God. Why has God allowed this? Why doesn't he do something about it? When we're stressed, we can take out our frustrations on each other. And particularly those who are closest to us. But James says... If we depend on the grace of God, it will help us see our trials in proper perspective. 
And he points us to the example of Job, that remarkable example of patient waiting. We'll be looking at him a little bit later. Then in verse 12, the second instruction is don't curse. It's a call for honesty and integrity. Older versions of um, James's letter have that verse as let your yes be yes and your no be no. We don't need a, a, an oath. We don't need to swear. Our honest answer should be enough. It may also be a call not to curse God in our trials. And, to ma and so maintain our integrity of faith that way too. Finally, as we wait, we should be counting on the Lord's compassion. James mentions the prophets and Job in verses 10 and 11. People who, despite their faithfulness to their calling, faced struggles of all kinds. But in God's purposes, perseverance produces something worthwhile. God will make sure that these demanding waiting times in our lives will produce the right result. As James says, the Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Though it's sometimes hard to see, this is the truth by which we must live. It's the foundation rock of our faith. Our God abounds in love. He is infinite in his compassionate care. Clinging to this truth will help us live with the patience of hope. Secondly then, let's examine what James says about the prayer of faith. Verses 13 to 18 are an extended treatment of prayer and they look at several key principles. Firstly, trust and acceptance. In verse 13, James encourages prayer when we're in trouble and when we're happy. He expresses a very important balance of prayer and thanksgiving. Whatever we face, we can count on God's sufficiency. Prayer expresses an attitude of trust and thanksgiving an attitude of acceptance. We find it easy to ask God for things. But maintaining the attitude of thanksgiving is not so easy in good times, let alone in bad. Yet this is what we should aim for. Expressing prayer and thanksgiving in every situation. Returning to James's example of Job, and by the way we'll be looking at his faith story in greater detail in the coming weeks. Job said, the Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. Job blessed the Lord, even in his darkest time. Then in verses 14 and 15, James encourages those of us who are sick to gather our fellow believers around us to pray. The key words in those verses are, in the name of the Lord. Because this is the essence of the matter, that we commit ourselves to God's will. James reminded us of the importance of saying if it is the Lord's will in chapter 4. We say this trusting that God knows the end from the very beginning. He sees the whole picture. Trusting in God's will is the wisest way to pray because it takes away the limitations of our knowledge of a situation. In verse 16, James encourages us to confess our sins to each other and pray for each other. Throughout his letter, James is concerned about community, how we live together and how we care for the needy. In this verse and the ones preceding, James teaches us also to identify the needs and the joys of others and to pray for one another. Our desire should be for one another's well-being, for wholeness, forgiveness, and restoration. Among trusted friends and with supportive prayer, confessing to one another can reflect our desire to stay on track and keep to the path of wisdom. Then in verses 16 to 18, James shows us the power of prayer when it's matched with a life that is right with God. 
He uses the example of Elijah, who had to keep on trusting in God when all around him didn't. Having prayed that it wouldn't rain for three and a half years, that prayer was tested each day of that time. Elijah persevered. And in his attempt to turn the people back to God, he also called in God's promise to act against the disobedience of the people. Elijah knew that only God could reverse the decline of faith in the people. So even though the consequences of the prayer were terrible, that drought, that lack of crop and harvest for three and a half years, Elijah knew they would fulfil God's purpose in bringing his people back to him. Like Elijah, when we pray, we come into contact with the God of wisdom and power. And so, like Elijah, when we pray, we should pray trusting that God will keep his promises. Finally, in the closing verses of James's letter, we consider what he says about the fellowship of love. The end of James's letter is very different from the end of Paul's letters, which usually end with blessings and greetings. James ends his letter with a call to action. Throughout his letter, we've seen what he has to say about the two paths, the way of destruction and the way of wisdom, and how there's always a possibility that we will wander from the way of wisdom. In these final verses, James isn't saying that we can save others. No, we're saved only by God, and our sin is covered only by Christ's work on the cross. Rather, James wants us to understand that we have a communal responsibility in applying what he's taught, as well as a personal one. We need to look out for one another, to work to restore those who have strayed from the path of God's wisdom. James may be continuing to urge us to pray, for that is the most significant thing we can do for someone in this situation. The fellowship of love is one where we pray and care and work to help one another stay on track. Well, throughout James's letter, we've been encouraged to express godliness in every aspect of our lives. In walking the way of wisdom, in doing the works of faith, in speaking words of truth, in living in submission to God, and in expressing our dependence on God's grace. God's purpose for each of us and for the Christian community is a Christ-likeness that expresses wholeness and maturity, a life lived with integrity and true faith. In studying James, we've been looking in the mirror, but also looking intently into the perfect law which gives freedom. So what happens next? We know that James says, do not merely listen to the word, do what it says. It's a truth to be done. It's a call to walk the way of wisdom. And each part of James's letter shows us that God gives what he requires from us. So we have both privilege and responsibility. St. Augustine once said, without God, we cannot. Without us, God will not. Will you place yourself in God's hands and work out his purpose in your life? Now let us pray. Jesus, King of Kings, you say that the righteous person will live by faith. Mould us in your image and fill our hearts with faith in you. Guide our actions so that we can live by faith and have a life in you abundantly and eternally. Cleanse our thoughts of impurities, dear God. Keep our eyes fixed on you and you alone. Help us to be steadfast in our trust in you and your scriptures so that we can live right in your holy sight. Amen.
as we come to consider how we can live out our life of faith, we sing our second song. Glory for light, we wait in darkness. <coughs> Let's pray. Let us pray to the Father for the Church and the world. O Lord God, and direct your Church in the way of truth, unity and praise. Fill us with the power of your Holy Spirit. Father God, we lift to you our churches and our members in these communities of Porcari, Roos and Penmark. We pray that we may be faithful witnesses 
of the good news of your son, Jesus, that your light and your love may be reflected in our lives, that your light and your love may draw others to you. And Lord, as we, as we remember James's words about patience and the suffering, we pray for our brothers and sisters facing persecution for their faith. We give thanks that they do indeed persevere under suffering, never ceasing to sing your praises, to speak your name. And so, Lord, where they experience exile, where they experience imprisonment, torture or execution, we pray that they may know your strength beside them and within them. We pray that they may be encouraged knowing that their brothers and sisters pray for them from a distance. And yet, Lord, when we are one in you, that distance geographically is nothing at all. And so we pray that they may be encouraged both by your presence and the prayer for support of others. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Deepen our awareness of the unity of the human family. Grant that we and all people may live together in justice, peace and mutual trust. And cleanse the prejudice and selfishness from our hearts. Inspire us to hunger and thirst for what is right. Lord, we pray for countries that know no peace. We pray for Ukraine, for Afghanistan, Syria, Iraq, Yemen. All those other places, Lord, that have slipped from our news feeds and yet are still in conflict. We pray that you will fill world leaders with wisdom, your wisdom. That in and through your wisdom they may seek the paths of peace. That they may build up dialogue and diplomacy turn away from conflict. Lord, we long for the fulfilment of the prophecy of Isaiah when <coughs> swords will be turned to plowshares. We long for the coming of your kingdom when every knee will bow before you, Lord. And even as we pray for wisdom, among our world leaders, we pray for it too among ourselves, knowing that peace, justice and trust begin here in each of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Teach us to use your creation for your greater glory, that all may share the good things you provide and lead us to love one another and unite us in the service of your kingdom. Lord, we pray that this place, this community hub here, may be a beacon of hope in our community in Rus. We pray that people will see the open door and look to come in, whether they're looking for help, whether they're looking to rejoice with us or share their sorrows with us. And Lord, we pray that we will be opening and welcome to all our visitors. Lord, place on our hearts those you know who are in need and give us generous hearts and open hands to help the ones that you show to us. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. 
strengthen all who give their energy and skill for the healing of those who are sick in body, mind or spirit, and set free all who are bound by illness, fear or despair. Lord, we pray for all known to us in their hour of need and distress. We pray for our loved ones. We pray too for those of whom we are not aware, those who have no one to pray for them. Yet they are known to you, Lord, because you see all and you love all. And so in the few moments quiet we bring before you this morning Lord our loved ones and those who have asked us to pray for them. touch in their lives and may they be restored to wholeness. <coughs> Lord, in your mercy, heal them. Grant a peaceful end and eternal joy to all who are dying and your comfort to those who mourn. Lord, we bring before you those whom we know and love, who are at the end of their earthly lives. And also those who will mourn their passing, and those who mourn the loss of other loved ones. We pray that you will strengthen them by your spirit and comfort them, that you will place friends and family around them to support them in their hour of need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer things good, Lord, that we pray for, give us the grace to lay the poor. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, we boldly pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And so we pray for the collect for the third Sunday of Easter. Almighty Father, who in your great mercy gladdened the disciples with the sight of the risen Lord, Give us such knowledge of his presence with us that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life and serve you continually in righteousness and truth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Pray for peace. O thou out of Tainava, the Haro Katinda, and my dad Nabodi in Dome Chagwego, a plasa nefi and rudded pepai. And the finni had holt a masodiadai in Gillenman. Della nina in Fuid and Piriad and the Noved, Nadav no Achi neb on Gutunedo. Shui Yessi greased in Hadwe. Amen. And shall we pray for grace together? Eternal God and Father, by your power we are created, and by your blood we are redeemed. Guide and strengthen us by your Spirit, that we may give ourselves to you in love and service of one another. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, just a few notices. bank holiday tomorrow so there will be no meet on Monday <coughs> as the schools are all off as well 
Um, but Wednesday will be a service of Holy Eucharist at the usual time of half past ten here. And Roos Community Choir will be meeting here at half past seven, uh, busily preparing for um, our open event, which I'll be mentioning in a minute. Uh, next Sunday, um, we have services of Holy Eucharist in Penmark and Port Kerry at their usual times of half past eight and half past eleven. And at 9.45, we'll have our Together service, our all-age cafe-style service here in St. Peter's. With Melanie away, there's no evening prayers tonight, um, but of course the um, Zoom meeting ID remains on the bulletin for future weeks for anybody who wants to join in. Um, in your notices from Melanie sent via email on Thursday, uh, you'll have seen the uh, minutes from the um, annual meeting <coughs> held last Sunday, in which were named um, our church council and sub wardens for this year. So many thanks um, <coughs> from us for all of those who have uh, been appointed this year and who will serve this next year uh, as wardens and our church council. <coughs> the biggest notice is for the Roost Charity Bake Off. I won't go through all the details because it is um, written on the bulletin and it has been publicised on the website, on the um, Facebook as well. But it's on Saturday the 21st of May between 2 o'clock and 4.30pm. Um, there are one, two, three, four, five different categories and people can enter as many as they wish. Um, so if you see yourself as a budding Mary Berry or Paul Hollywood, let's, you know, let's be equal about this. Um, please bring your entries by 1.30 on the day. Uh, even if you're not baking, uh, do come along because apparently it's we the people who decide the winners. So even if you can't bake a cake, you can definitely eat one. Or more than one. Um, and those winners will be announced towards the end of that afternoon. Rashma does need volunteers for help as well, so do speak to her after church today or make contact with her if you can be available and let her know how you can help out on the day. The other event we're highlighting at the moment is our grand opening on the 13th of May, Friday the 13th of May at half past six in the evening. Um, you've all been given an invitation um, or, the, or you can collect one or more on your way out. Do please pass that on. We'd like to see uh, the building full of people wanting to celebrate with us that evening. Um, come along and hear the community choir. Um, they're busy preparing for um, uh, a short performance during that opening event. Come along also and hear um, groups of singers from both our primary schools um, who will be joining us that evening. Indeed, come along and hear the Archdeacon. Um, he was thrilled to be invited to speak at the event and he's looking forward to being with us. So do come along and, and meet Rod, our Archdeacon, and, uh, and listen to him as well. And if that isn't exciting enough, come along and enjoy a bun fight with us after we've had a, a, a short uh, celebration and Thanksgiving here in church. But pass those invitations on um, and let's, uh, let's make this building rock on the 13th. Have I got any other, is there any other announcements? Good. I will say it's, uh, having, having been through the dratted lurgy myself, it is lovely to see those of you who suffered, I won't say alongside me because we were all in isolation, but those who suffered at the same time as me, back and in hopefully full health. So uh, it's lovely to have you back among us. Too many things on the lectern this morning. Okay, let's uh, sing our final hymn. To him we come, Jesus Christ our Lord. <laughs>
were doing that last term. Sunday school joined us. What have you been up to today? got a mention in our in our teaching today as well we had our last passage in James and that particular incident was was mentioned in James's letter so great great work together today well may the love of the Lord Jesus draw us to himself may the power of the Lord Jesus strengthen us in his service and may the joy of the Lord Jesus fill our hearts and may God's abundant blessing, every good and perfect gift from above, be with us all and those whom we love, both today and always. Amen. Amen. Amen.